is in um, until we go into executive session and then I'll put them in the waiting room. So let's call the meeting to order. It is 6.04. And I'll just make a note of that so we can give that information to Katie. Um, would someone like to make a motion to go into executive session? And the statutory provisions are for that I listed there are for personnel matters and contract negotiations, that kind of stuff. So moved. And, and also, and also uh, other potential legal matters. Yep. Okay. All right. So Rick made a motion. Is there a second? Yes. Second. Okay, let's vote. Rick? Yes. I and I. Sharon? Aye. Don? Yes. Okay, and I'm going to put. Okay, so let's get started. It is 7.01, and we already called the meeting to order at 6, so I'm looking to see if there's public comment for items not on the agenda or changes or additions to the agenda. All right, hearing none, I don't see Sandra. John, can you text Sandra? John? John, boy. I think he's frozen. Yeah. John, are you there? Let me see if I can get, if he's not, I'll try to, I'll try to text her. Okay, thank you. How do we tell John he's frozen? <laughs> Maybe from a chat window. Can you try that? Message him. Um, are you doing it, Katie? Okay. I can hear you. Oh, there you are. We couldn't, you were frozen or something. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Why am I not seeing Sandra? What's her last name? Fervor? Fervor. Yeah. yeah. He has Buzz's name. I'm not seeing it in my contacts. That's weird. I'm... Just a second. I'm I'm texting her in a second here. If I can, it's got a. Her clock might be a few minutes off the Mars or something. I I don't have her in my contacts. I might not either. I just, I don't. Um, I've got her phone number somewhere. Oh, I got it. Hey Sandra, this is Denise. Um, we're all, the gang's all here and we're waiting for you to log into the Zoom so we can do your um, treasurer's delinquent tax reports. All right, we may have to skip around, I guess, if you're not able to sign in. Thanks, bye. Hi, Eileen. Um, Okay, let's um let's skip over let's do um do you know oh wait a minute here's sandra all right we won't have to skip oh there you are there you are thank you all right so i am going to call up your um Treasurer's report. If I can find it in the Google Docs. Treasurer report. Share. 
Um, all right, there we go. Go ahead, Sandra, you're up. Okay. Um, we look very good as we come into the last um, couple of months of the fiscal year. General governments, um, at this point in time, general government is um, over in revenues by, hang on, by $50,000. And it looks like we are actually going to have expenditures at budget. I, I suppose we could go over, um, but we're going to, Looks like we're gonna end the fiscal year to by about thirty thousand dollars, thirty-seven thousand dollars. You folks will recall that we roll into the general fund balance that we open the year with, and um, that will support the town's cash flow between July 1 and September, the middle of September when we begin to collect taxes. Highway also is... Uh, were, is uh, there any, were there any line oh, are items? Are there any questions? I should yeah, were there any? Were there any line items in the... Um, I had a question on other expenses. Um, on page, I think it was here. Is it there? I'm no, here. it was up here. Oh, where did it go? Other revenue. Deficit loan, it shows zero miscellaneous. So remind me when we we're paying off that deficit loan, is it the beginning of fiscal year 22? Oh, I'll have to look that up. I don't know that off the top of my head. The deficit uh, from a, an accounting standpoint, or at least a municipal accounting standpoint, uh, we have to keep uh, bud uh, budget line items on the, on the chart for a couple of years. And we're still paying off that loan. If you give me a quick second, I can tell you when that will uh, terminate. Hang on. That's okay. I don't want to hold things up. I just wonder. Uh, I don't we... recall if FY22 is the last payment or the next to the last payment, but we're closing in on that. Okay. Yeah, I know it's coming right up. Okay. That was it. Um, so in other words, so general government, we're doing well. Yes. Okay. And then, um, All right, so now you're gonna to talk to us about highway, correct? Yes, did anybody have any other questions about general government and that report? Well, that's great news. Yeah, it is. It news. is. It is great news. And yeah. we'll talk more about that when we talk about the delinquent taxes that remain outstanding. Mm -hmm. So highway two is showing an, an excess of revenue over budget that promises to uh, be a, that looks like it will be a significant amount. Um, I did do a rollover projection at Toby's request. And um, if at the close of April, the highway fund balance is, uh, let's say $290,000 roughly. You mean to the good? To the good. And that fund mm -hmm. balance is created when you subtract to date expenditures from to date revenue. So mm -hmm. as of April 30th, there's still $290,000 available to get the highway expenditures paid through the end of the fiscal year. And that would be June 30th. Does that, not, include, does that include salaries? Yes. That, that it includes all, ex, all expenditures. Yeah. Okay. How does, Sandra, does that track 
I mean, I know generally they kind of I always track those year to year by month because they fluctuate. There's certain periods where you've got a high expense, others low. Is, is there a comparison like that that we do? I mean, yeah. are we, is this kind of comparable to other years or are we doing well compared to this, this year might might be a little bit of an outlier because we had quite we had grants mm -hmm. and years occurred in the prior fiscal year. And we also had an a, and one extra state aid to highway <coughs> payment that the state of Vermont granted to towns uh, in in light of COVID. Mm -hmm. So what what we're really looking at is what what can we expect to spend in May and June at this point. Mm -hmm. And so um, in in the report in FY19, that would be 2019, we spent roughly $40,000 total in May and June. In wow. 2020, we spent $111,000, $112,000 in total. I can't I don't have access to any other information, Rick. We mm -hmm. we emailed about that a little bit. Nimric yeah. just we we just started with Nimric, and um, we don't have <laughs> access to historic to data. QuickBooks prior to that. But I would say that 2020 is an outlier year because we were at the height of COVID, mm -hmm. and I think um, I, I I don't know that that's a good indicator, but. 2019 is is probably a good indicator of what is usually spent in those two months. And it's going to be really up to the board um, what there, you will do or won't do with this information. It would, as I said, no additional revenues are anticipated for highway as opposed to general government. We're, I still expect revenues to come in between now and the close of the year. So in highway, we're not. We're really looking at um, what what do we think about expenditures. I, I tend to be very conservative, and I would say I do, I, I do, and I'd say, well, let's just say we're really going to spend one hundred seventy five thousand dollars between now and the end of the fiscal year. So if we do that, what happens? Well, we'll have about one hundred fifteen thousand dollars. Um, <laughs> into the highway equipment fund. And that is just simply that $289,000 balance minus $175,000. It's mm -hmm. just for pure, uh, a pure yeah, exercise in subtraction. Man. So we're likely to have roughly 114 possibly it, to it, roll over. It, yeah, it, it looks like that and maybe even more Mm -hmm. I, as I said, I tend to be conservative. I don't know exactly where we are in the way we're managing our bills. So I would go, for me, I would always estimate the expenditures on the high side. Uh, you will have an <coughs> FY22, uh, 2019 Westar lease payment that had been coming out of the capital equipment fund. This year, we only have $16,000 in that fund. At, the, at this moment, and we're going to need roughly 42,000 to make that payment. I would say to you folks, you, without a doubt, we're going to have sufficient money at the end of this fiscal year to roll into the Highway Capital Equipment Fund. And Rick, just to get you up to date on that, um, several years ago, the town voted that any excess funds in the highway budget on June 30th, get 100% get rolled into the Highway Capital Equipment Fund. And, yeah, I, I and remember that, is, that. And that is as opposed to actually budgeting an amount to get rolled over into that Capital Equipment Fund. It's, it's a strategy. Anyway, this year, you're going to have enough to make that payment. And uh, you, you'll need about $25,000 to make that payment. You'll have it. I feel I feel certain about that. And I also think you're going to have really close to $90,000 available uh, in addition to that at the end of the fiscal year. So um, that would get rolled over. That would get rolled over. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, the most prudent course of action, of course, is to wait and see 
you could have an engine blow up. We, we had that happen uh -huh. uh, just a couple of years ago. That's a painful memory. It's still there. Um, so at, I, I can't predict what could happen or what will happen, but we're really, really strong in both budgets as we're closing in on the end of the year. Well, that's good. Okay, if there's nothing more on highway, can we move along to, anybody have anything more on highway? I can't really no, no, that's see good. everybody at the moment, but um, if you have a question, speak up. So, um, the last, the last item I would like to talk about, and then if, if there are any other questions beyond that, that's great. And I'd like to talk about uh, the delinquent taxes still outstanding. Uh, we have $15,000 in delinquent taxes outstanding. And Rick, that is less this year than it has been in previous years mm -hmm. since I've been collecting delinquent taxes. I really haven't done a historical analysis other than the three years I have been uh, collecting taxes. Um, I will tell you, I am not going to name names or even pick out parcels at this point, but there are probably two parcels that are going to go to uh, tax sale. Um, one parcel, and I think uh, one parcel I am concerned is an older senior in our, in our community who lives alone. I have not been able to find anyone who knows this person to inquire if there has been an issue. This person has never been on the delinquent tax list before. I am concerned. Uh, I've emailed, the emails go on un reply to, none of the notices or letters have returned so um, um, I don't really know what's going on with that particular parcel. And I have as many failures out as I can be, because we wouldn't want to pull the trigger if this person say is um, suffering some kind of medical situation oh, yeah, and yeah. may yeah. not be at home. Yeah. Um, as I said, this person has never been on the list before. So it's uh, concerning. The one parcel will likely go to tax sale. This parcel has been in tax sale every other year for the last six years. It's kind of the way they get paid. And I think everything else is uh, likely to come in um, or most of it will come in. So we are, um, we're, we're just very strong right now as we close this year. And what will that mean uh, when we set our tax rate? Let's wait and see. We, uh, we only need a certain percentage to cover our um, cash flow for two months. I don't know what the budgets for the summer grants are gonna be yet, but um, if, if we really have a lot of money uh, in the general fund, it, we could perhaps apply some of that to a, a reduction of taxes. So we'll have to wait and see. That That is, that's very yeah. speculative at this point. But that's what we so, and our, and, Yeah, and our fund balance is good. The auditors must be happy. They'll be happy when they see it. <laughs> yep, yep. Okay, um, anything else on delinquent taxes or highway? Um, budget that anybody wants to ask Sandra? No. Okay. Thank All you, right. Sandra, gonna, for gonna, sending gonna, that data to me. I'm going to stop sharing the screen then. Okay. Yeah, that's tricky. All right. Um, anything else, Sandra, that you want to talk to us that, about? or The only question I have for the, uh, for the board is one that you and I threw around a little yeah, bit already, yeah, Denise. And that is whether or not uh, the board feels it is useful to do the VLTC's benefit and wage survey. Um, it takes it 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 takes some oh, right. time, to, yeah, to get the data input. It's not seamless with uh, any program, um, and I I believe that the board felt it wasn't as useful as they thought it might be the last time that I did it. So. 
the deadline is uh, sometime in July. We, you, you have plenty of time to decide, but if you want me to do it, let me know. Yeah, I know I, when Sharon and I were using that um, at one point, it was really hard to, it wasn't like comparing apples to apples or oranges to oranges. I don't know. I mean, I think it takes you quite a bit of time to do it. And it, it, I, think, it does. I think we get a, I think we get a free copy if we participate. And if we don't yes. participate, then we have to pay for the copy. So, um, you know, our data is not in there if we don't participate. So well, we know what our data is. The yeah, copy, I mean, by the way, it, the copy is $50. It, it, yeah. You pay me more than that to do it. Yeah. It, it does. It takes yeah. <laughs> several hours to put it yeah. together. Okay. So I, it sounds like I'm hearing that we're not going to participate. You let me know. Okay. You don't have to decide that tonight. You have plenty of time. All right. Very good. I'll Thank you so you much. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Sandra. Okay. Have, have a good, good night. You, you too. too. You too. Bye, Sandra. Bye, Sandra. <laughs> okay. Very good. We stuck right to the timeline. Yay. Can we um, can we can we maybe um either capture that as a future agenda item or circle back in a little bit on on that? Decision point Sandra left us with? Yeah. I think I have it on my list. Okay. Um, let's talk about the consideration of purchasing a 2014 Western Star truck. I know that Rick and John have been involved. John went and looked at the truck. Um, I don't know if, I don't know if you guys put down a you know, a hold on it with some money. So why don't we start with um, the board members weighing in on the truck. John or Rick? John, go ahead. So, uh, yeah, Rick, Rick met with Alfred. I screwed up my calendar and missed that first meeting, but I did go faced in garage on Friday in Ruck. I did not have the right clothes to crawl under the truck, but I was able to look at the truck um, and the, the, the cab and truck frame look really good in terms of the exterior and any rust. Um, the interior of the cab looked really good, not all worn out either. Um, but uh, the dump body was pretty clear it was seen rust and it's starting to rust on the seams and you take your thumb and pull you can pull chunks of rust right off of it so um if, if number one if we were going to conclude that we're interested in buying we should also include in the price having that at the very least dump body but i would say the higher frame sand blasted and painted um and then uh, lanolin undercoated. If we want to get some life out of it, though, is that dump body is going to be hurting in a few years? Um, I, I'm I'm assuming that Alfred had heard it, heard it run and it run well. I did notice a couple of very small drop uh, oil droplet spots on the cement right under the back of the motor. I'm guessing it's a little bit of a drip from a rear seal, but it wasn't a puddle. It was just a couple drops. That didn't seem like a problem. Um, and then of course, there's the, what are we going to use this stuff for going forward? Because this is part of the full discussion. Is it going to be part, continue to be used as a backup truck, or is it going to be in full time use uh, with an, a, an added highway crew member along the lines of? shortening our, our plow routes so well that was my question john yeah um who is this is this truck meant to replace the current spare or is it meant to be for the new fifth driver and if it's meant to be the new if we need a truck for the new fifth driver would we not want to take out a loan and buy a new truck i'm just trying to wrap my head around well, what this truck is for the question that came to mind is, you know, I, I've been told, I've been informed that 
when our trucks have seven years on them doing what this truck did, that we need to get rid of them. That we should cycle them out in seven years. This is a seven year truck that I'm sure did most of the same things as the truck. Clearly seen Route 100 oh. road salt. Um, right, right. Uh, it, uh, you know, pushed, had the burn of pushing and hauling the same materials and same snow that we had and going up hills and over dale and everything else. So that's either an issue or it's not an issue. Um, I've always struggled. I think that we give up on our trucks too early, unless if they're not rusty. I always feel like it's better to keep one running. It's rusting. I underscore rust. Um, but um, what was I going to say? It, it's a nice truck. Um, and Alfred informed us that to replace it, today's dollars, today's uh, a new truck is $200,000 all outfitted. Um, you know, I, I, it really has to do with, I guess it's, you know, six or one and a half dozen or the other. It, it, there's a cost. It's not just the cost of buying it. I think does need to be sandblasted and painted. Yeah. Well, that truck is not that the dump body at least is not going to be there a few years down. We can, we can do that at the shop. We, we sandblast. Yes, we have done it, done it in the past. We've rented a sandblaster with a compressor and we can sandblast it right there in the yard at the shop and paint it as well. Oh, so really? okay. you know, if, if we want to do that, it's not going to be a huge expense. I mean, you know, you're going to have to buy, rent a machine, buy the yeah. sandblast, buy the paint, but the labor I can do right there at the shop myself. Okay. The, uh, yeah, the I mean, I, I'll let Rick go as we finish this. Um, I bought uh, one of those kits online, a gallon pail with the spray gun and everything else to apply that lanolin undercoating that everyone's using now. It's not that right. expensive. It's no, actually I've, I've already got one. Someone do it, but I've I'm already got that stuff. set up. You do? Yes. Awesome. Yes, I buy it by the five gallon pail and yep. it's, it's sort of a rubberized coating. Oh, and, yeah, I know. So, what you're talking I'm about. talking about the lanolin. This, yeah. is the, like, this is like an oil undercoat, but lanolin based. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, Roger uses that on our vehicles. But anyways, Rick, did you have any comments? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, based on, I've talked to, you know, through this with Alfred and we, the numbers are actually really quite good on it considering the, John was able to get a look at that undercarriage a little bit. I mean, if, you know, anywhere from, I mean, the net cost with a, you know, with a trade-in or at least with a sale of our old unit is somewhere probably between 55 and $64,000. So and with us, what, uh, that's, you know, that that's pretty good here. The question, I, the only question I have is, you know, we, this is good as a replacement truck. I, I, I mean, I, it looks for, for the, I mean, not a replacement truck, but a, uh, a spare. spare. And it looks, looks like we turn, you know, a spare truck generally gets used about a third of the mileage. Like I would, uh, that was an average, uh, you know, Alfred gave me, you know, so if we're doing frontline service with this thing, we're taking a risk because it is into that, you know, we're putting a lot more vibration, a lot more miles on it. So, and given the fact that we've hired somebody and that we're talking about reducing this cycle time on our roads, uh, you know, that to me indicates that we're going to be, that these trucks are going to be, we're going to need another frontline truck. Now, I mean, so, you know, this is where, what begs the question, you know, if we can, we're going, to, if, if we do that, we're going to be buying a new truck at some point. So do we replace this spare truck now with this, when this is a good deal and this should give us at least another, what, six or seven years, you know, for, for say 55 to $65,000, something like that. That's a, that's very good. But 
Well, I, I would think that we're looking at having to purchase another front line after this. We might be able to use this for say a year to get us through to you know raise begin to raise funds to you know purchase another truck but i'm not sure i'd i would ask alfred this too i mean i i wouldn't want to put you know an older truck that you'd normally be taking off frontline service you know into into frontline service but right well so. keep in keep in mind that our six wheel truck is due next year for replacement Anyway, if we follow the seven year, because that's a 2015 and that could be replaced for the frontline truck. So we could use, uh, okay, so wait a minute, we've, we're replacing right. that truck. Now that's, an, that's already a pre-existing truck, but we're adding another. Right. Uh, that that could be, it. that could be our spare truck essentially is what you're saying, right? We would yes. retire that to the spare. So would it make sense? The question is, would it make sense for us, you know, if if we can, if we're going to added, you know, increase our frontline service, you know, to just go ahead, you know, and purchase a new truck, we have to see if we can afford that, and and then, you know, use our old truck another year and then retire, and retire that truck, the truck we've got into spare service. I mean, would that so, make sense? So let me just let me just make an observation. If you're looking for the board to make a decision tonight on what to do about this truck, um, we probably should have known up front. You know, what is this new person going to drive? Are, are, are we going to buy this used truck and then the beginning of the fiscal year and we get somebody hired? Are we going to be looking to have to buy another new truck? I, I, well, I think that comes with the with the territory with with adding a new person, another person, you have to add another truck. I mean, I think that's sort of the package. Yeah, and, we're, and we're we're talking about decreasing the cycle times on the plow the road. So that means you have to have another truck on the road to do that and another person. So and that means of that means a full time, you know, this is going to be a full service truck with that person. So that's that's yeah. So that's, that's my the, so that's my question. Why would we buy another used truck if come the beginning of the new fiscal year we're going to be asked to purchase another new one? Because oh, we're right. going to have large expenses on the existing spare truck. I mean, we had eighty four eighty four hundred dollars last year. I can already see uh, eighty four uh, forty five hundred dollars going into it before winter before, okay, let, before let, what's that i want to let sharon speak okay um i agree with the point and question denise just raised i'm i'm wondering alfred the answer may very well be yes and you know i wouldn't remember do we have a like a like a master plan of equipment. Like we've got this many trucks, this is where they are in their in their lifespan. This is when this one's gonna time out. And where does this new one, this one is replacing the old one. And then tying to the point Denise just made, how does that all come together around new equipment we're gonna need? Like right. how does it all fit within the, well, the we're on our equipment and our budget, and you know, like on paper. I know you have an answer, but well, and, and I would love to hear the plan. answer. But yeah, the Toby, capital plan. Toby has a capital plan put together that spells out when each truck will be should be replaced, and that's a seven year plan. And the, and this one is is just stepping into a truck that's leaving well, the seven year plan. Right. Well, no, 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 no. The, the, okay. the, the spare truck that we are referring the to spare. is 2009. So it's way beyond the seven year replacement plan. Oh, and so then this essentially, okay. essentially this is we're updating just our spare truck. Our spare. Okay. And, so, and it's a great deal. It is. So, can I, so, can I, so again, this may just be you have to refresh my memory, but didn't we keep the old? The, the one as a spare 
because why not? Or do or did we necessarily? I thought that 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 what we use as a spare is is one of the other trucks that's graduating, but we should keep it because it's still good. Well, we've we've always had a spare truck that happened right. way back in Don Singleton's days right. being here. Right, yeah. right. Uh, but I thought but I thought we came by those spare trucks as as I said, one of the one of the newer ones graduates and gets replaced, but it's still a really good truck. So we keep it as a spare. Now right. we've typically traded them in. <clears throat> so I guess my right. my thought right. is when we were budgeting for this fifth person, we didn't, at least I didn't as a board member, think to say, oh, we're gonna have a new person. We should be putting in our budget for a new truck. Right. So now I'm hearing from Alfred, well, of course it's a package deal. We should have known that. Well, maybe I didn't know that. So the question is, is do we buy spend all spend all this money on a used truck and then beginning of the new fiscal year we're gonna to have to buy a new truck. So John has his hand up so maybe he's gonna answer my question. Oh. This is uh almost a no-win situation and a no-lose situation, if you will. I, I agree with Alfred and Rick that this is good value. Um, it's less than a third of, it's 30% of the cost of the new truck. So let's remember that after all is told um, in terms of trading in the other one. At very least, we uh, have for now that our new guy can start out with. And then as we kind of gain fiscal momentum, we can, you know, focus on getting another truck. Um, I think Alfred also put on our radar that one of the graders needs to be graded up on. So there's a lot of fault. I, I think, you know, if I haven't, didn't look at the plow and that, that's kind of simple um, stuff. I, I think we should do it. Uh, but, I, you know, I, I, didn't, I just didn't know what the cost to sandblast it and get it cleaned up so the thing doesn't rot away. Um, I think we should buy it. The thing has a standard shift, by the way, which is better, in my opinion, than automatic in terms of durability. Um, I think it makes sense to, that it makes sense to uh, purchase this. If, if this air truck right that we have right now is uh, really on its last legs, there's going to need a lot of work. And my understanding is a spare truck's pretty rusty, Rick told me right, right off the Yes, it's very rusty. In fact, yeah. the, and the 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 bet the body where the chain delivers the sand out the side of the truck yeah. is okay. is worn very thin. I mean, it's worn thin to where that's part of the forty five hundred dollars that I mentioned of repair because that mm -hmm. it's good, it's going to catch up. It's going to catch the chain and it's going to you know one morning when we're trying to sand the roads, it's going to catch up and then we're into mm -hmm. a complete rebuild yeah. and I mean not to mention last winter I mean with Paul was my main mechanic and he was every time that truck went out it was coming back and Paul was underneath it it just was <coughs> always always some repairs that that truck needs because it's played I mean we've it's just been it's served us well but yeah. it's we've hard. had it a long time when, I think I think to that no to Alfred I believe you told me too the repair cost it's actually in the last year's budget, which is that eighty-four hundred dollars, that's all hired out work as well. That's not—I don't think that included the work you did internally. Your that's staff. right. And so this is actually quite a bit bigger. We are going to—we'll work you and Toby. I will track that in the future so that we—it'll actually really help us with this cost benefit. Um, right. It's pretty, but we'll—we're working with what we have now. I think that question here is—you know—can we? I mean, it is a very good deal and it is time to upgrade that trade. The thousand dollar question is, do we do it? Do we get a new truck, you know, get the new truck now so we've got a frontline truck and then retire, our, you know, and just bite the bullet and spend some money for a year, you know, and get this other vehicle into in its regular, you know, retire our, our frontline truck in a year or so in right. this position or do we buy this i don't know well, what the trade-in value will be on on the truck that's going to be going it's, so we need to... dropped. it's dropped in two two in 
in less than a year, it dropped two thousand dollars to trade. Yeah. So I want to. Yeah. I just want to remind people we need to really move this along. Okay. And I see that I see comment. I see John and Toby both have their hand up. So go ahead, John. Uh, the other thing is, if we have a uh, a fifth employee and a truck is down, then what we can do is we can always find work for that employee, throw them on the grader, and then we could just go back with the remaining trucks and employees. They can do the less than optimal current loop. So we could have two sets of loops that everyone's trained mm -hmm. on, the larger loops that we're doing now, and the new smaller loops. And if we have a down truck, then we can always have the remaining trucks larger loops till we get the truck back online and then we can wing out bank whatever with the grader there's always stuff to do um so i don't i think by having that extra employee that extra truck we actually have a lot of to have a truck used um like this and it, uh, i just think it it makes good sense for Okay, well, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for, we're looking for you and Alfred and Rick to help advise us in making a decision. So I'll let Toby go for a minute or so, and then we're going to have to make a decision here because we have to move on. Okay, so I talked with the salesman today. So the the deal on the table is we can either trade in at seventy seven thousand minus thirteen for the trade. Or we can purchase outright at 75. We have that option open until we take delivery of the truck. So it can, if we keep the old truck until August or September or October and sell it then, we can choose to have the uh, 75,000 with whatever we add there in cash on the sale. The other thing is, new trucks are actually way behind right now because of the pandemic and a lot of other yeah. things. Good point. If we tried to get a new truck, it would not be until the end, probably the middle of summer next year before we would see a truck. Wow. Okay, well, so that's it's really, really, so it's that's really, an important point. So it's wow. really not going to help us to pass up on this truck if we're thinking about adding somebody for this particular winter season. Okay, really so then I would, I, would, yeah. I would make a motion that we authorize the purchase of this. 2014 Western Star truck in the amount of what's the amount, Alfred? Uh, well, it depends on if you include the trade. It's seventy-seven thousand without the trade. Well, I think so, we should trade it. Well, do right. we, the question is, do we sell it ourselves, Alfred? I was, could get more right. money. I was thinking five thousand without the trade. It's what, John? It's seventy-five thousand if we keep our truck and sell ours it on our own. That's right. 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 But if we decide to do the trade, it's 64,000. So I would say to authorize up to 64,000. And if we uh, if we make the deal as get more money than 13,000 to sell it outright, we'd save more money. Yeah, you mean right. authorize authorize the expense of 75,000. No, no. 64, no. Probably 64. 64. Because you'll, you'll never pay more than 64,000 if you try to 64. Oh, I see. That's right. Yeah. So, 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 what you're saying is authorize up to up to sixty four thousand, because the rest of the the cash, the the delta is going to get closed one way or another by that other truck. Right. We right. Yeah. So if, we, if we don't, if we don't the... get a thirteen thousand dollar offer for the truck, then we have a guaranteed trade in of thirteen thousand. So. Right. Okay. So my know. motion will be the sixty four, sixty four thousand even. Yeah. yeah. Okay, sixty-four thousand to purchase the used Western Star, two thousand fourteen Western Star truck, and I think that's all I need to do, right? I, I I would like to just make sure that this is a priority that that thing gets sandblasted and painted this summer. I I think that we won't own it, John. We won't own it until December. Oh. No, we're, we're just signing a purchase and sales agreement. The truck won't be available to us until December. Are they going to keep driving it then until December? Yes, it's part of their fleet. So what happens if something breaks on it or? Well, they have to fix it. It's still their truck. I mean, I, I've been guaranteed by the salesman that it will have a Vermont State Inspection sticker on it before I take it. Yeah, that doesn't mean anything. 
No, it doesn't. It doesn't. But there's so little trucks out there. There's just not trucks available. That's why I'm, I'm anxious to grab this one. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I hear your I hear your point, Albert, and it's valid, especially with what Toby said about the market not having much available in the line of equipment. That's very true. So the, the delay is due to their their weight on the new truck, huh? That's right. Because they won't get their their new truck won't yeah. be online until December. Okay. Okay. So we know that going into it. Um all right, so I made the motion. Is there any friendly amendment that anybody wants to make to the motion? Is there any is there any contingency given that 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 we you know what happened, you know, if they don't get their delivery in December, is that going to really hurt us, you know, at our end? Um, if, you know, should there be any contingency in that contract for that or, or do well, there should be know, a mileage so. contingency. I don't know. I mean, if I were going to trade a truck personally and they didn't care mm -hmm. on the, the trade end, what the mileage ultimately was going to be, I would run that truck first and foremost and wear that one. Right. Cause we were getting rid of it. So there should mm -hmm. be a mile at that price. We need to get a a guarantee on a mileage cap they can't add 30 grand or 20 grand to that truck and have us pay the same price so how can we put can, that into i can motion? talk to i can talk to sandy about that the salesman and see what what we can do for a cap on mileage right okay so i would add a, an amendment to my motion that alfred will investigate and work with um rick and or john to put a cap on the mileage and if that doesn't meet with their satisfaction then we would need to revisit this issue a mileage cap will create a disincentive to them to overuse that truck. right right um, john just be aware that they're trading that in so essentially they have to have a sort of mileage cap for the trade that they're doing so no, they don't. the dealership but is I'm already looking at They'll just get less on their trade. They don't have to do anything, you know. Well, not, well, they've, they've already, already got, got a, a deal. Purchase, if they have a purchase and sales agreement signed, they've already right. got a deal. They've got. Okay, so deal. I'm trying to I'm trying to get to this moved along. Uh -huh. And I let, I think I can help Denise. Okay. Um, can we? I'm I'm fine with the mileage cap, but 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 can we also? What we're what we're what we what you're really doing is addressing a new idea that has come up, and there could be three more ideas that come up after we make this motion. Mm -hmm. So so let's have the motion say, you know, the sixty four thousand, the mileage cap, if that still fits, but that we authorize Rick, John, and Alfred, Alfred. to <laughs> cover do what do what's in the best interest of the town if something new occurs to them or arises. Okay, so I would add to my motion then that Rick, John, and Alfred do their due diligence in making sure that the truck is in good shape upon purchase. And, and then, yeah, and negotiating and negotiating the purchase and sale for us. Right. It's okay. Is that, is that clear as mud, Katie? Yeah, I think Sharon's is good with the. Okay, so are we clear? Are you ready to vote? Yes. All right, Rick. Aye. I'm an aye. Sharon? Aye. John? Yes. Okay, good. All right, lesson learned that we always have a lot more questions we should think about um, when we're doing this kind of investigation. Um, Katie? I missed the second on motion. Um, I think it was John. Thank you. All right, moving along. Um, curb cut application for Razenkowski, and I did go out and try to find these two curb cuts, and I noticed that on their application, you see where it says it's for residential, and it says change existing curb cut from residential. So my question is, and I think I found the pink flag um are they gonna close up their other curb cut because remember we generally try not to have two curb cuts onto one property alfred do you know the answer uh no they're gonna close one of them down 
Okay, they're actually so they're actually moving their house. So really? They want they're picking their house up and they're moving it like a hundred feet. Wow. So so they are trying to somebody's somebody's wait a minute somebody's got some kind of phone call going on my, my answering machine is picking up it'll stop really soon sorry so they are picking their house up and moving it so i told them that they would have to block off their existing curb cut right so they would adding, have to close their existing curb cut right turn it to lawn or whatever they've got to do yeah. right Right. So that's that's what I know. Okay. And does it particular. does it need a culvert? Um, no, I didn't recommend a culvert just because of the lay of the land. I did recommend that they have to cut some brush to gain uh, sight distance okay. because they're they're right on a corner and there's a bunch of brush that's going to uh, prevent vision. Okay. So that is, I talked, I've, I've met them there with their architect and them, and, and I said that's the one thing that definitely stands out in my mind is that they would have to cut some brush. Okay. To allow for sight line, sight distance, right. Anybody else have questions? Oh, that's pretty clear cut. So, Alfred, are you recommending then that we? Approve this curb cut. Yes, I didn't. I didn't see anything um, alarming at all, as long as okay. they cut some brush. All right. So I've written down um, what you said about them moving the house. They're going to close the existing curb cut. They're going to cut brush to improve sight distance, and there's no culvert needed. Correct. Okay. All right. Would somebody like to make a motion, or I guess I could make a motion to approve this as noted with conditions? There's a second? So oh, moved. Second. Okay. Are you ready to vote, um, Sharon? Aye. John? Yes. Rick? Yes. Okay, and I'm an I. All right, the other curve cut is this Burke curve cut. And it's loading. There we go. So I think I found this one too, Alfred. Is it? Is this the same Burks that live in the? I guess is this a new project, or is this have something to do with um, Peter and Deb Burks' place? It's the same property. It's a subdivision subdivision from Deb and Peter's property. It's okay. One of, it's one of their sons that is going to build a house. Okay. Yeah. So I did find that it's a pink flag, right? It's a pink flag, sort of right on that corner below their house. It's yeah. like close I mean, to it the looked, it looked like, side. It looked like it had good sight distance, from what I could tell. Yeah. Well, again, I met with their engineer um, out there way prior to this, and told them that that's the best option that there is and so their their restrictions are that or their <coughs> our conditions that we need to apply there is definitely they need a culvert and what's, secondly, what size what size culvert 15 inch? Uh, 15 inch yeah minimum of 15 inch okay and, and they, they also have to follow the the standard that follows every curb cut. That's the B71, the B71. right? B71. The B71, yep. which prevents the uh, two from being too steep. It's going to be a certain pitch, oh. so that right. water doesn't come into our roadway. And it didn't look like they had a lot of anything that needed to be cut, from what I could see. Right, there won't be a lot of right because it's on the corner. Um, right, but. You know, it might just be good to say some brush cutting because because of the corner, and we won't know how until they build it. We won't know how it's what it's going to look like. Okay, so keep the brush cut for sight distances 
Yes. Um, on, on corner. Yep. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Yeah, uh, I just want to make note that Sharon has recused herself from this discussion. Oh, Either, she did? Uh, uh, I guess a conflict or perceived conflict. Uh, oh, okay. I didn't know that. Well, she just messaged us. Oh, okay. Uh, she'd like Katie to reflect that in the minutes. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. So I would make a motion that we approve this new curb cut it requires a 15 inch culvert they need to follow the b71 standards and they need to keep the brush cut for sight distances on the corner i'll second okay anybody have any other comments or thoughts alfred do you agree with approving this yes okay let's vote rick yes john yes Okay, and I'm an I, so we're good. All right, roadside mowing schedule. Uh, oh, okay. okay. Now, now I see Sharon's note. You can't see the note. You can't see chat when you're screen sharing. I didn't know that. <coughs> okay. So Alfred, I forwarded you a bunch right. of documents. You'll remember from ahead, Joanne Garten and um, stuff. Yes. Did you come up? Did you come up with a plan? Yes. Yes, I got all the document documents. I have read them, and I have a plan. <laughs> okay. Did Early. you? You didn't send it to me so that we could put it in the folder, then, right? Right. Well, I didn't. I don't have anything written up. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Um, to start to start mowing end of May, first of June, and if you look at the map, the resilient right away map, most yep. of the most of the wild turbo is down near Lightning Ridge Road, Leonard Singleton, um, down in that area. So my plan is to start mowing that area first uh, to get ahead of its flowering. And then pretty much mow the rest of it, the rest of the town after that. Um, but by looking at the map that they've got, most of the turbo is, is in that area. Lightning Ridge, Tucker Road, George Road, um Adam at road so that's what i was basing my energies towards following that map as they as they have pinpointed where the turbo is so it sounds like katie for the minutes that we need to note that alfred is reviewing the map as identified by um joanne garten in the resilient roads um report that they did and he's going to follow that suggestion uh, for the mowing schedule. Is that what I'm hearing, Alfred? Is that right? Yes. Okay. Yes. And, you know, pretty much once we start mowing, we're mowing all summer. Right. Because, because it's, you know, to start mowing, to keep ahead of the, before it flowers, it's going to flower again. Yeah. Um, so we're going to have to go around twice and it's 80 miles and right. it takes it takes a lot of time yeah so she essentially says, we're just gonna i'm gonna have one guy on that mower all summer long as long as it runs yeah, and that's kind of what we had isn't that kind of what we had last year wasn't jacob mowing or something he yeah he was the main operator of it yes yeah but, I, I thought we i thought we budgeted to hire a part-time person to do that um, well, we've got ten thousand dollars in the budget for roadside mowing, um, but it's it's. I haven't found many people knocking on the door to come operate that machine. I mean, it's, it's put an ad on front porch forum. 
Um, not for that particular job, no. That uh, might be something that we could do. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah, I think, I think <clears throat> we definitely should. We need somebody that is particular to that job so that I'm not losing one of my one of my manpower throughout the whole summer. Yeah. So, so I mean, my ears are open to to suggestions as to who might be a good person for that. Um, you, you I've passed it. I've passed it. I have passed it around a couple to a couple of people, and you know they're either too busy or they're they're just not interested. Um, so I haven't had much luck. You might want to reach out to Rick Barstow. He's kind of semi retired, and that's kind of what he does. You must maybe. If he has a drop spell in the summer, he'd, he'd be willing to do some of that filling gaps. He's pretty skilled at tractor driving, right? He's been doing it That's for a good idea. Years. Okay. I can reach out to him. Okay. Um, Sharon, you had your hand up a minute ago. Um, I did, and I'm going to make a point different than what I was thinking a few minutes ago. Um, no matter who we hire, particularly somebody who has other things going on, may need to hay. Um, we want to be really, really clear, Alfred, about our expectations for showing up and getting it done. This is not the kind of job that gets done um, when you have time. All right. When yeah. the wild turtle is ready to harvest, we'll be there to cut it. You know, there might be another person, Tori Weston, Dan Weston's son. I'm wondering if he's, a, you know, that or he, that might well, be a possibility I'm, too. I mean, I can I can reach out to him too, but I can assume right now that he is swamped. I mean, he's advertising. Yeah, for, he's expanding his business into driveway mm -hmm. repair and excavating and. Yeah, I so, saw that on Front Porch Forum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. so yeah. he might be a good option, but I don't know that he's going to want to. Bandwidth, yeah. Well, I think what I'm hearing is the board would support your reaching out, maybe putting something on Front Porch Forum, let me know if you need some help with that. Um, and you're going to follow the, the mapping that Joanne did. And I'm looking at this, um, what did she call it? Put cheat sheet from May of 2020. You know, right. chervil starts to bolt in May and June. Um, other things are mid-July. So I'm assuming that you would work with whomever's doing the mowing to identify the areas to be mowed. Now, the other, the other issues are, um, and this sort of plays into what we should be discussing now, which is Peter Harvey's request to post the no mowing signs like he's done the other, other years. So I wanted to get the board's thoughts on that before um, we go too far along. Rick, do you, you weren't, I'm gonna let somebody else go first, Rick, because you weren't here over the years. Sharon, you wanna speak up? Um, I think I have two, two different angles on this. One is I think we're, you know, we've come this far that, and we've, we've you know, wanted to support um, Peter's, what he, I think, if he were here, would call an, ex an experiment. He's testing something, and he's let us know that that is ongoing. I hear the concerns that were raised in Gail's e email, and and what occurs to me is this just, it requires, we're at a point where we need to do a little process improvement. So um, can we put some, get some signs up that, you know, let folks know that we are, thanks, uh, Denise, that we are, you know, we are, I don't know, whatever they, what I, whatever they say, slow down. Um, the road, road's narrow, slow down, whatever they need to say, but some way of, of having both in, that's what I want. Hey, uh, folks, I'd just like to make clear uh, that I, I will be, again, responsible for mowing my own roadsides like I have been. So please don't mow in front of my property. Um, okay, let's, let's address this. Yeah, well, I, I don't know who Gail's talking about ragged roadsides, but she better not be talking about mine. 
Yeah, yeah I don't know. She didn't say it. I didn't ask. I'm keeping a mode. Okay, so Sharon, Sharon did you want to comment further? Okay, anybody else? Rick, your thoughts? Uh, on that, I, you know, I would say if I, I'm okay either way. I don't have enough history on this to really know what the issues are. But I mean, I would say if Peter, if we, if he's going to, I would say the posting would be limited to what he can actually do. So because it, I mean, you do want to keep this vegetation down for sightline reasons and everything else. So if he think, I mean, that's the way I would approach it. Um, it, but okay, so it sounds like we're in agreement to let Peter continue with his experiment, but we'll want to keep an eye on it and see. And I, I think last year I did drive down there after hearing complaints about sight distances and those kind of issues, um, just to see for myself. So I think that we could put in the minutes then what I'm hearing is that we would have the board agrees to let Peter Harvey continue with his experiment on is that John is that old west church road or what is that road there's four roads four roads okay old west church west pond fowler and what's Singleton. the other one else Singleton Singleton well no 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 then it's Sparrow Road Sparrow, Bliss Pond, Old West Church, and Fowler. Okay. You got so, that, Katie? So did Peter get permission again from those property owners like we requested last year? Um, he didn't say, but we could put in the minutes that we want Peter to report back that he's gotten permission from the property owners to post the signs. Because, uh, you know, we have property owners to, if they see tractors skipping their property, yeah. because... Peter's decided to do this without their input. Uh, they might want their property mode. So, all right. So, are, sorry, are I'm sorry. Go are, ahead. Are Peter's signs sufficient in terms of signage? Essentially, they're telling the he's telling the road crew not to mow. Right. But so, it's, it's not so, like it's so what so does anybody have any thoughts on different or additional signage that tells motorists just alerts them that slow down um the roads are narrow do we have any such signage Alfred? um no we'd have to, i'd have to get some made i suppose but so we're just going to label four of our roads that need that people need to drive slow because they can't see around corners i mean that's essentially what we're saying is that we're not mowing our roadside so you have to please slow down yeah and i wonder if we post such a sign and something you're happens asking, what's the town's liability right you're asking for a liability it is there's a liability issue with it yeah well, I think we need I mean, to go not, back to not mowing, just not mowing is asking for a liability. Yeah, yeah. You can't see no, around these you. corners. It's I think it's putting us into a into a position where it's where it's a liability for the town. So yeah, I think he's right in that. Yeah, yeah, he is. So I think I, we need to maybe not answer this question tonight, but to go back to Peter and find out if he's gotten permission like we asked him to do last year before we can make um, a definite decision to do the rest of the board members agree. Yeah, and I, I would also add, you know, if we're going to do this, you know, I would think at the least to places like intersections where you've got to have, you got to have sight line clear visibility. I mean, I think we mow those, that's a safety issue at that point. Is, you know, it, I, is it a safety issue if people are actually going the speed limit? Yeah, it's a, if you can't see, it is a safety emission because the issue yeah that's uh you know where roads are intersecting or you know i i don't know alfred what your thought is i mean these aren't super high adt roads so but it uh right but a lot of them are very winding and they're they are. corners mm -hmm. you know and if 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 one can't see a car coming and they collide 
and they can have a they got a lawyer that can say well yeah. the town didn't maintain their their road sides and i couldn't see the car coming that's what the clearance it's, a, it's right. a huge liability i i i'm afraid of it so, so i think we're speaking generally uh but i will say i know stretches or i don't know one area where there's a blind corner or could be one due to non mowing at all i i I'm looking, I'm thinking in my mind's eye, Old West Church Road is only that intersection with Bliss Pond, but that's, there's no blind corner issue there. It's not mode as a triangle. Um, that's the only, maybe that's the intersection of Fowler and, uh, Fowler and, uh, what is it called? Uh, Adamant Road. I don't know what it is, like where it becomes Singleton Road. But I, I have been at island long before with my mower because the chervil is so thick that I don't want it growing. So I've been mowing it before the road crew gets there. Uh, I don't I'm, do what you want. I've, I've said my piece. That's all. Yeah. yeah I, that's a general concern, but I don't think it applies here on, on those roads. That's all. Okay. Well, that's good. Well, I don't know. Hope, I'm not let's sure. Hope not. Okay. Oh. So, um, you got this for the minutes because I want to be able to go back to Peter and give him the blurb from the minutes of what we would want him to do before we're going to approve his request. And Rick, do you you would you be able to drive by there, Rick, and just eyeball it? Yeah, the roads. I can do. Yeah, yeah as a to... as a new set of eyes. Sure, sure. Okay, that'd be great. Thank you. All right, and then let the record reflect that John Brabrandt has asked that his road not be mowed. Do you have a from a from and to location, John? I can't remember. Uh, well, yes, just my property. Uh, it's it's based where the I don't even know what the name. This this my property is more or less bounded by two two streams. There's a southern one we replaced the colored on. And so that's my property line. And then north, on the north end, um, there's uh, another stream there. Um, and it, the guys know where it is. Okay, so let the records reflect, yeah. the minutes reflect that. And Stephanie Kaplan has asked that um, Jack Hill Road not be mowed from, at, from the same location as you remember last year, Alfred? I would like it if you could put this on a paper on paper for I can give it to the operator. Yeah, well, she's so that he can know that all these different spots because it's just going to keep growing. Yeah, there was well, a spot on, last year. There was a spot on the county road that we were asked to not mow. So if there are going to be these spots all over town, you need yep. to make a list so I okay. can give it to the operator because I will not remember them. I've okay, got, I've got we, we all can, I can do to remember, you know, where the where the trucks are going in a day. I mean, I, I just yeah, no, I hear it. We can it, just we put can, it on a list, make a list, and I can give it to the operator and we can do that. Uh, Alfred, you make you can make the list. You make the list. You sat here through the whole discussion. You know what the roads were last year. You can make the list. I think it's your job to make the list. If you want to double check it with us when you when you're done and make sure you captured everything, that seems reasonable to me. Yeah, I mean, Kate, Seems you can like you get can it. You can get, it. you can get the list from the minutes from Kate from Katie's minutes. Um, and Stephanie's ask is from her house down to the intersection at Moscow Woods. It's same, same as last year. And you know, I mean, just think, it's not it's not as many man hours as somebody's going to need to spend on the mower. It, it's not true. It's not true. The mower still has to go through that road. Okay. Well, what? Still the same amount of time. So I'll make sure you get Katie's draft minutes so you can make a list. Okay. All right. I think that's the end of our roads and road commissioner and all that stuff because it is eight fifteen and we need to move on unless you have something else really quick, Alfred. No, I'm good. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. Thanks, right. Alfred. Have a good night. You too. All right, we need to, this should take hopefully like three minutes. Um, 
We need to approve mailing of ballots for the June 30 special election to all the registered voters. This is the same thing we did um, back in, I guess it was March, before, well, February, when we mailed the ballots to everyone. The polls, the polls will still be open, Judy, right? For in-person from seven to seven? Right, there'll be um, the regular election day at the town hall from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Um, and I'd like the vote to reflect that they would, all ballots would be mailed for the June 30th election to all active voters rather than so that we can omit challenged voters. I've talked to the secretary of state and this is, you know, the COVID protocol when we mail to all registered voters is not to, not to mail to the challenged voters. That'll save us like 153 postages. And it's, and, so and those and those voters are mostly people who've moved away, but they haven't alerted us in person directly that they are no longer on the checklist. And what's what's considered an active voter? Is it they had to have voted like in the last election or the last presidential election? How do they determine active? Um, no, that's it. They mainly have to have lived in town and be registered. Um, and uh, there's a rule that the Board of Civil Authority reviews the checklist every couple of years um, thoroughly, and then we go on those recommendations as to who to remove. Um, but you can't do that 90 days before an election. We've had so many elections in the last few years with the school elections that I have not been able to purge anybody, get anybody off, because you're not allowed to purge 90 days before an election, unless you hear directly from that voter. So that's why we have this large number of challenged or people who are pretty, all their mail comes back essentially. Okay. Um, so all we have to do is say active or you can say all registered because we'll, but if anybody's challenged and they don't get it, they need to request it if they're still on, if they still want to vote. Okay, but, does the board have, board have any questions for Judy, comments? No. Okay. Yes, I would make I would make a motion to authorize approving mailing of ballots for the June 30 special election to all registered active voters. I'll second that motion. Okay. Any further discussion? Questions? All right, Rick, are you ready to vote? Aye. Okay, I'm an aye, Sharon. Aye. And John, there you are. Aye. All righty, very good. Anything else, Judy? No, just that we only have so far, May 24th is the deadline for any submissions of intent to run for election mm -hmm. um, for either select board or town clerk. And right now we have two for town clerk and that's Jeremy Weiss and Matt Mitchell. We don't have any for select board yet. Okay. And so there's about 14 more days. I've, okay. I've, heard, right. I've heard from one person who I, who I think is gonna come forward for select board. I will circle back to said person. If they don't, if they miss that 5 p.m. May 24th deadline, then that's it. So just everybody's it, aware. Everybody is well aware, Judy. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. No, no, thank you. All right. Um, next <coughs> up, and let me see if it's in the Google folder, the dog, the dog warrants. Um, Katie, is it in the folder? I'm not sure that I saw new dog warrant things come through, did they? Um, yeah, Judy sent it around. I did not copy Katie, I sent it to you, Denise. Oh, I thought it went to Katie too, shoot. If you can open your email, Denise, you can screen share it from there. I can? Okay, let me find it. Um, there's so many emails, let me see. Oh, dog warrant. Oh no, Judy, you were, I asked you to post it in the Google folder and you said, we'll do. Oh. But I don't see it. I don't, I don't do that. <laughs> I just never, never figured oh. out how to do that. So sorry, okay. but it's all updated. It's May 10th. Um, I, maybe I have it in my email here. If I can, I, 
I have to go downstairs and get my phone to do a dual. I have to do like three steps to get into my email on this laptop. Well, the, the warrant reads the same as it does every year. It just gives right. um, Wilson authority. I have I have the, the warrant here. I just don't have all the list of names. It's the same warrant as we do every year. It's, it's to Wilson from the board. Um, under the, the authority of the state of Vermont, you are hereby commended forthwith to impound dogs and wolf hybrids, not duly licensed and according to the law, and you are further required to make and return complaint against the owner. So what happens is Wilson contacts, now contacts all of these delinquent um, dog parents and gives them 90 days to get their dogs licensed. That's that's the, the gist of it. If the board isn't comfortable because they can't see. The the language is archaic and it's been used for five decades. Years. Yeah. So it's it's really standard language. And the list was printed today. So it it's absolutely up to date in terms of the number of the untagged dogs and and we can just scratch off names as as mail comes in with registered dogs. Okay, is the board ready to proceed with this? Yeah. Okay, so would somebody like to um, <clears throat> approve the dog warrant, the 2021 dog warrant <clears throat> memo to Wilson Hughes, our animal control officer? And might maybe you could authorize me to sign on behalf of the board. Anybody want to make a motion? Oh, so sure. move. Okay, is there a second? I'll second. All right, let's vote. Rick? Aye. I'm an aye. Sharon? Aye. <coughs> John? Yes. All righty. All right, we are so on schedule and so happy. Um, I guess Nick, are you? Oh, yeah, Nick's here. Good. So we're a few minutes early no. <coughs> to talk about the local emergency operations plan. Let me see if I can find it in the Google folder and I can call it up. So so guys, this is like my first time really driving on my own. What do you think? Doing great. <laughs> yeah. No glitches. Well, yeah, there was the dog warrant. Pretty minor. Okay, it's working on it. <coughs> You've earned your aviator's goggles. Oh, thanks. Okay, there it is. Yeehaw. Nick, do you want to just run us through this? Sure. I got to um, go get a I got to go get a drink. <coughs> <We're> right back. <coughs> this is the local emergency management plan. It's uh updated every year by the town and is supposed to be submitted to the state by May 1st and nothing bad happened because uh, if, if we had had a tornado between May 1st and May 10th, we wouldn't have gotten uh, FEMA reimbursement, but that didn't happen. So we're good. Um, and the 2021 local emergency management plan looks a lot like what we did last year uh, on the uh, municipal adoption form where I removed uh, Cliff's name, added Rick Keen as a point of contact. Mm -hmm. And um, there are a few other minor changes in the list of uh, res local resources, but um, nothing terribly significant. And, uh, and by the way, it's been really great having uh, Rick become a select board member because Rick has a lot of experience in emergency management at the state level and through the uh, Department of Transportation and at the State Emergency Operations Center. So I am looking forward to working along with um, with Rick in the next year on building out the our local plan. Thanks, Nick. I am too. That'll be that'll be good. A yeah. lot, lot of good stuff we can do. Mm -hmm. um, so I I don't have any particular part of this to turn your attention to. Um, it's pretty similar to what we had last in the last year. Yeah. Uh, did he, did it is. He, I did. I did look at it. Thank you, Nick, for oh, working on this. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. 
Anybody have any questions on the local emergency operations plan? Oh, it's very okay, basic. It's, yes. Uh, I don't see any hands up as I scroll through. We, um, we last year we beefed it up quite a bit from where it was. It was, I will say, skeletal in previous years. Um, and I think this hasn't changed much from last year, but in the year to come, I think Rick and I will be doing more with it. Yeah. Okay. yeah Great. Okay. All right. So we need a motion to adopt the local emergency operations plan for, this is every year, correct, Nick? Yes. yes. And by the way, for the minutes, it's the um, emergency manage management plan, not operations plan. Oh, OK. Yeah. Local emergency management plan. All right, I'll make that motion. I will. Rick, do okay, you want to second I'll it? I'll second it. I'll second. OK. So Rick, would you like to vote? Aye. Uh, Sharon? Aye. John? Yes. And I'm an aye. All right, great. Thanks much. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Nick. OK. Um, all right, now I need to find these letters. Let's see. Let's um, do Central Vermont Solid Management. Um, we have two groups applying for the Northern Borders grants. They're Central Vermont Solid Waste Management and North Callis Memorial Hall. This is their letter of interest to Northern Borders. And now, um, now they're asking us to Oh, where did it go? Well, now I have to get back into the Google folder. How do I do that now? <coughs> oh, glitch. There you go. The, the, the triangle in the middle. You need. Uh... Yeah, I'm trying to get to the. You're OK. Oh, go. Oh. I'll yeah, stop. I know. I just have to have time to get there. So I got to get, I got to, I can't see the folder thing because you guys' spaces are all over it. Just drag it. Go put your, oh, put your. Jack, in a dash. Oh, there we go. Got it. Um, sorry about this. No, it's okay. Um, <clears throat> okay, letter of support. I'm not sure which one we're going to be looking at first because they both have the same name. Oh, this is North Calus Memorial Hall. So we need the other one. Okay, here it is. All right, this is to the Northern Borders Regional Commission. And <clears throat> what's her name? Cassandra. I forget her last name. But Cassandra at Central Mount Solid Waste Management. And I ran this by Bill Powell. It's just basically a letter of support. Uh -huh. So would the board like to approve a letter of support of this letter of support? Absolutely. I move that we sign. I'll this. second. Yeah, I'll okay. second. All right, Rick, would you like to vote? Aye. Okay, I'm an aye. John? Yes. And Sharon? Aye. Okay, now back to the, this is North Calus Memorial Hall. Um, I asked Mary Jacobson, Rowan Jacobson to draft the letter. It's, so hopefully you've seen it in the folder. <clears throat> Any questions or comments on that letter? No. All right, does anybody like to make a motion uh, to approve Denise, this letter of support? Denise, how come both of the letters have your name already on them? That's unusual. 
the ones that I got, they that's the way they came through and I changed it to on behalf of the select board. I see. Okay, thank you. Yep. All right, is there a motion? Oh, it's so moved. Third. Okay, second. 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 All right, would you like to vote? Um, looking at the squares. Rick, you're up. Aye. John? Aye. Sharon? Aye. Okay, and I'm an aye. All right. And I, I keep forgetting to ask Eileen. Eileen, are you here for something in particular or? You're on mute, Eileen. Uh, I'm here. I'm here supporting Mark. Same oh. subject. Okay. I'm just listening in. Yep. All right. Um, other updates. Cliff was not able to join us tonight because he had something come up, but he sent an email. Um, and this is his update on Friends of the Town Hall that the Friends of the Town Hall would like to request a special meeting with the select board on June 21. The purpose of the meeting is to review the usage policy, manage agreement and rental agreement. The entire friends group will be available to answer questions from the board and hopefully we can end up with an approved management agreement. Um, and if we have any questions, I could call him and get him on the phone. So that's his update on Friends of Town Hall. So the 21st is a, um, a, a Monday night that we would not normally meet. Thoughts, comments, questions? Or would we move that to a regular meeting night or just? Uh, I think they're thinking it's gonna take a while, like maybe an hour. A, a long Should comment we, time, okay. That's, that's I think that's what they're thinking. It's gonna take some time to, to work through um, the documents because there's three of them I'm and we've been it. getting and we've been getting inquiries from folks wanting to to use the town hall they want to set a wedding date they want to mm -hmm. do um some kind of a um for a music performance and things like that so at some point maybe we can start talking about it at our next meeting what we need to look at and review with regard to, you know, opening up the town hall for use again. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm of two minds. I mean, I, I, I'm, 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 we're still trying to teach ourselves what are the things that we do more deep dive offline with one, one, maybe two of us, depending on the depth of the issue. And what do we dedicate an entire two hour meeting to? Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. I think this is a really important document. And when we started looking at it before, there were just a lot of questions. And I'm concerned that if the whole board isn't involved in the discussion, um, we're going to it's going to come back to the board and then somebody's going to have additional questions and we're not going to get it done. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm thinking. No, I, 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 I can easily be, I can easily be in that position as, as well on something of this magnitude. And I think because it's a, an important municipal building and we are for the first time engaging right. in this kind of a public private partnership to manage it really on behalf of the town um this is pretty uncharted territory for us and it's yes. got huge um it's high profile we're doing it right at the time of, of everybody coming mm -hmm. back into public spaces together there's so many convergence of unique situations it it, it makes it makes sense um and so I'm I'm fully on board for this one. However, there are so many other important issues, really important issues that we can handle um, 
in a in a delegating outside of long meeting. Um, and I think we're and I think we're working on that, Sharon. So uh, no, I've, absolutely. I just yeah. I just want to like you know keep that framework and note that this. This actually is an unusual exception for all the reasons we're saying. And I think it has huge implications moving forward. If we, we need to try to get it right, we'll probably have some things we need to tweak along the way. And I think that's when we could delegate it. Um, right. Once we've moves. done it one time, we don't have to keep doing it. Right. Uh, this one, unless we screw it up bad. Right. <laughs> Let's hope not. Mm -hmm. That's why I think getting everybody's input right out there out front and I would hope people would take time to review the documents prior to the meeting to help make things yeah. more efficient. Okay. Um, this is a good time for me to say I'm actually going to be away on June 14th. Okay. So that's my excuse slip. Okay. You're excused. Have a good time. Um, okay. One other thing, IT update. Um, Remember we asked Ruben about sending over that executive summary. I checked with the office staff today to see if he had forward that executive summary so I could forward it so the board could have it. And the office staff are gonna check. So that's the only IT update that I know of. Katie, do you have any IT update? I noticed um, on the town website that you can now see the full calendar and it lists the meeting. So whoever did that, thank you. That's a huge huge help. Yeah, we really wanted it to be that way. So basically after the select board authorized hours for me to work um, on this project, I met with Judy and Barbara. We kind of reviewed what their um, preliminary, preliminary thoughts are about things that need to be fixed. I've spent time taking the tutorials that um, Gov Office offers so that I could understand better how to do what needs to be done. And I started making some fixes like that, like formatting, hiding old pages that didn't need to be seen. And I'm, I'm currently um, working on figuring out how we can into Nick and I are communicating with the town office staff about how we could get a lot of old documents that are kind of just hanging out seen and unseen on the website into some kind of a saved space that RB Tech recommends so that it could be saved for backup. So we're doing that piece and then we'll reconvene, I think later this week or the beginning of next week so that we could be really clear how the office staff wants the things to be organized rather than the dump that kind of happened. Um, so we're, we're, we're working on the organization piece next. So I, I expect I'll be able to report back good news on, on the user end kind of side of things making sense from a customer service kind of perspective, how Judy and Barbara would like to see that go forward. I will say I was looking for some minutes and I can't remember if it was planning. Forget whose minutes I was looking for and they're just not there yet. There weren't minutes. No, I couldn't find any minutes. All right, let me email you about it, Denise, because I'd like to know I'm keeping kind of a running list of things that need to be tidied versus things that need to be re reorganized or just fixed. So maybe okay. I can tell you about it. Sure. Do you have any, do you know of any other IT updates? Did you get your new laptop yet? I haven't heard anything about it yet. Okay. Because that was something we authorized, I think. Last meeting, right? Last meeting, was it? I think yes. it was last meeting. I, I yes. don't, it was two weeks ago. I don't think I have action to take on that. I think that that's in RB Tech's hands and they were saying there's some supply chain issues. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I could follow up with them if I don't hear anything. I just, yeah, I just wondered. I mean, it's only been two weeks, so. Yeah, yeah. I would guess maybe we need to give it some time. I'm just anxious for you to have your new, new yeah. computer. It's such a weird glitch when it's working, it's working. And then when it's, it's a hardware thing. So when it's not, it disappears. <laughs> <laughs> what a pain. All right. Um, select board, we have time to review some minutes. Okay. So let me get to the minutes. Okay, the oldest minutes are from February 22nd. And just for Mark and Eileen's benefit, um, I'm sorry we couldn't get that damn, the damn damn on the agenda tonight. So feel free to not hang around if you don't want to. All right, now what am I doing wrong here? I'm trying to screen, screen share minutes. Here we go. 
February 22nd. And I can't remember. Oh, these are the ones, John, that we wanted you to look at. We were we were good with approving them, except for we had a question on wanting you to review the section of the minutes where you spoke about the background of the band. Can you look at those? Yeah. Can you pull it up some more? There was a there was a little mistake in it. The rest of it was pretty accurate. Um, can Can you see it? Yeah, I'm looking at what you got. I'm reading through. I can't remember. I knew it when you provided it to me. Funding piece. Shoot, now I can't remember. Um, you want me to scroll up or down? Yeah, Tell yeah me. scroll up. Sc uh, scroll down, down, I'm sorry. Whatever two ways up and down. Um, uh, Mark Mahaley commented that the, that the Father Gills own it but don't want to. Uh, I think Mr. Mark Mahaley actually commented that his understanding was that they don't own it. That was the comment. Um, and I disagreed with that. I said that, you know, our town attorney, we hired an attorney to do, a, you know, a deep research on this. And uh, Father Gill's attorney had used an excerpt from statute without providing the full context of that statute. Uh, so that that was, Mark did not comment that, he, that they didn't want to own it. His understanding at the meeting was that they didn't own it, that they, were, they had relinquished ownership and I, disagree that they had that legal option. So that was the that was the inaccuracy. Can can you help me find exactly where that is? Because I Yeah. Um I if you okay. see it, you'll see a four hundred thousand dollar number and then you go yeah, right okay. there. That so, sense. he commented that Father Gills had relinquished ownership and not that they didn't own it, that they didn't want to own it. Um they, it's, it is true they didn't want to own it. That's why they they thought that they procedurally could relinquish ownership. Um, I'm trying to think what there was, might've been another one. Rose commented she was involved. Uh, John Braben reminded the group about a requirement that was pushed by one resident at the time and we've significant amount of initial costs oh okay this other thing pushed by one resident I, I mentioned that barry bernstein had come up with the idea about morris root uh being at who was an engineer that could provide an alternative that that would involve rebuilding the existing dam but uh that that did not pan out let's just put it that way uh, what do you want it to say do you want that struck, that sentence? Uh, I, no, no, that, yeah, I don't know that matters. It matters really. <laughs> Just strike it. I'm reading through the rest. Uh, Um, I didn't consider, I, I said it, it, it's, I would like to see the, uh, the, and the option and op the, the state allow an, the option of draining it to basically dredge the pond. Uh, uh, the wetlands engineer at the time that I brought that issue up said he would not allow for that, but it, I think that that is an option we should explore. And I, I spoke with Mark Mahaley about that on a phone call. That's it. Okay, so this is what we were waiting for. I think the board, in my memory, we reviewed it and just wanted your input on this section. So with that done, yeah. um, is there a motion to approve the minutes with the changes that John has suggested? So moved. Okay, I'll second that. All right, are you ready to vote? Um, 
Rick. Aye. John? Yes. Jaron? Aye. And I'm an I. Okay, so those are done. Uh, let's see if we can get, let's see if we can do, um, the next ones are March 8th. Oh, I have to go back here, don't I? Screen share. Oh, there they are. Magic. And we had gone through and Sharon and I made some um, notes and changes. Anybody have any further comments on these? Or can we accept the changes oh. and approve these minutes? Everybody good? Yeah. Is that a motion, Rick? It's a motion. I'll move. I'll okay, so would anybody like to second that? All right, I'll second it. Um, further discussion or comments? You ready to vote? Rick? Aye. John? <coughs> John? Yes. Okay, thank you. You were on mute or something. Sharon? Aye. Okay, and I'm an I. Yay. See if we can do maybe one more. We can do we can do two more and they'll be half put to bed. Oh, that works. I counted before we started. Oh, did you? Okay, good. We had eight. Okay, March 22. Anybody see all that? Okay, any further comments, questions? Oh, that's look good. Okay, is that a motion, Rick? That's a motion. Okay, is there a second? Thanks, go ahead. Okay, I'll second it. Okay, Sharon seconded it. All right, Rick, to vote. Aye. Um, John? Yes. Sharon? Aye. And I'm an I. Okay, one more. Um, the minutes from my birthday. Hmm. <clears throat> wait, wait, you take minutes at your birthday parties? Man. You're getting weird. No, yeah, no, not the, not those, not those minutes. Um, where did they go? Why can't I find them? 329. Share. It's doing its little twirly thing. It's thinking about it. Okay, let's see if it can help me do this now. All right, Katie, what do I need to do? Let's see. I'm Shall doing screen share and it's not calling. Maybe I could do it. I don't know why it won't let me call these up. Oh, good. Okay, good. There we are. All right. Anybody have any other? Comments. I think that was a special. Yeah, it was a special meeting, so it's shorter. Mm -hmm. So, Rick, is that a motion to approve? That's a motion. Okay, I'll second it. And is there ready for a vote, Rick? Aye. Um, Sharon. Aye. Ron. Uh, acknowledging I was absent, I still will vote aye. Okay. Thank you. And I'm an aye. And it is 8.50. We could do one more. Good. Um, April 8th. Yeah, this was also a special meeting. This is 
and I guess my question is, and I'm not sure the answer, we had minutes, but we didn't have a quorum. Um, so I don't know if we just say at the bottom that there wasn't a quorum at the meeting and, or but people that weren't there can vote on them. So I guess I would make them, I guess I think I answered my own question. But, you don't have to be a meet at a meeting to vote on them. But it is a, it's not a meeting of the select board without a quorum. And that would be the only but, reason that we are approving these. So what are you, so what are you saying? Um, I think the folks who were there, it's, it's not a meeting of the select board. I don't know that they need to be formally approved. And if, and maybe the folks who are there say these minutes accurately reflect um, the discussion that occurred when we were there. That works. Yeah, that um, worked. I guess that could work. Did you get yeah. that, Katie? Katie, can you put a can you put a sentence in at the bottom? Uh -huh, uh -huh. So, yeah, so, so we don't have, well, no, 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 it's not, we don't, there's nothing for us to approve because we're, it's a zone. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, yeah. no, it's, it's, no, it's, got, it's yeah. it wasn't really a meeting. It isn't, um, you're right. It and, wasn't fully constituted. Right. Right. Got you. Sorry. And, and so um, maybe it should say that somewhere at the top two. Um, yeah, right in the right in the present, maybe a note before present. Yeah, right, right up at the top, maybe. Uh, yeah, oh, I would I... do. Do you want them to be titled notes instead of minutes? Um, <clears throat> I, I no, I think I think if we just clarify that there wasn't a quorum of the board, but the the notes accurately reflect what happened or something. All right. Um, anything else, select board, or do you want to adjourn? I am incredibly proud of the work that we're doing to streamline our meetings. And Denise, thank you for yeah. your leadership in that. And thank you. Great job, Denise. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, Thanks. thank you. And Hope thank you. And thank you to, you know, members of the public, most of whom aren't here anymore, who have to, um, well, who ha not have to, but who are learning along with us how to do, how to be more efficient by having more productive discussions outside, et cetera. So it's, it's, it's good. It's exciting for me to be part of this growth for us. That's All good. right, thank you, Select. I will. Just helping me in, move things along. Thank you very much. I will say, I have a note. I've, I'm meeting with um, Jessica on the on uh, on Wednesday over in East Calais for the stormwater project. So we'll oh, I'll report back. I don't know, John, if you're planning on being there. That if what, uh, what time is that at, Rick? I think it's one o'clock. I'll verify that, but it's it's at uh, yeah. There, it's we're going to look at the. Uh, basically at the access road. So we'll find out, I'll try to find out what we need, what our responsibilities are and then what the uh, SLR people are going to uh, do or what they're, you know, who's doing what I should say. If I can break free, I'll go. I would absolutely like to go. Yeah, excellent. I'll, I'll verify it and get back to you tomorrow. Okay. Could you, okay. could you call me or text me, Rick? Texting calling is better. When you verify. Texting, te which one did you prefer, text or call? Uh, text me would be great at my cell phone. You got my cell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do that. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I'll try to do, get, remind you that day as well. So, or, you know, a few hours before. Can, can you put a thing on your calendar that it bings you? I've, yeah, I've, it sounds like John needs all of the tools working with him. Yeah, I've got all right. Yeah, Is got. there a thank you, Rick and John, for working on that, and thank you, Rick and John, for working with on the truck. Um, yeah, no, thanks, thanks, John, for getting up to see it. Last that week did this week did not work for me. It was a bad one. Nah, yeah. not, um, it, I was on the way through there, so I think that's I think that's I'm pretty happy with the way things are going. I mean, on this, it's it's a pretty good. Yeah. 
All right. Um, just one more check in, Mark or Eileen. Do you have any comments? No. Okay. Great. Thank you, everyone. We need a motion to adjourn, please. So, so moved. moved. Okay. Sounds like we got it. And Second. you ready to vote, Rick? Aye. I'm an aye. Sharon. Aye. And John. No. Okay. You're on your. <laughs> you're on here on your own. Have a good time. <laughs> Thank you, Eileen and Good Mark. Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Thank you, Katie. And Katie. We'll see you, Katie.